This is a revision video made for Module A, Textual Conversations, exploring Shakespeare's 1611 play The Tempest and Margaret Atwood's 2016 novel Hagseed. In this video we will focus on structure, style and form, as well as revise the comparative character analysis of Prospero and Felix and of Caliban. However, this is a large module with scope for so much more. So please do not limit your exam preparation to only these aspects and characters. Atwood was commissioned to write Hagseed by Hogarth Press as part of the commemoration of the 400 year anniversary of Shakespeare's death in 2016. The brief was a contemporary reimagining of one of his plays. The characters have always been favourites of mine. It is one of his meditations on art, what it does. I know you already know the plot lines of both texts, so I'm not going to summarise those. As always, we should revise the module rubric. The rubric begins with the directive, explore the ways in which the comparative study of texts can reveal resonances and dissonances between and within texts. The recontextualization of Shakespeare's classic play into a novel set in modern, modern day Canada offers rich opportunities to do just this. The Hogarth collection was based on the idea that Shakespeare was a great reteller of stories and it aims to continue this tradition and celebrate his legacy, introducing his plays to a new generation worldwide. The books are true to the spirit of the original plays while giving authors an exciting opportunity to do something new. It is this combination of something new in Hagseed set in a modern-day Canadian prison, with Atwood's constant textual conversation throughout with The Tempest that make the text so compelling. This is a hybrid postmodern text. It uses songs, rap, script and performance and has strong metafictional elements, echoing the strong metatheatrical elements in The Tempest. The multi-layered aspects of this text must be emphasised in an essay response. Consider using words such as interpretive, fusion, permeated, counterpoint, multifaceted, correlative, imbued, reimagined and recontextualized alongside the rubric keywords such as resonances, dissonances, mirror, align, collide, common, disparate, assumptions and perspectives in your discussion. When she began writing Hagseed, that would began with the epilogue of The Tempest. In a play that ends with the words, set me free, you have to take that into account, she has said. What is it Prospero needs to be set free from? Why does he feel so guilty? That epilogue has always been extremely intriguing to me. I started with the questions it raised and worked backward. In 2002, Atwood talked about the power of art and illusion in her essays about writing. Without his art, Prospero would be unable to rule. It's this that gives him power. Altogether, he is an ambiguous gentleman. Well, of course he's ambiguous. He's an artist, after all. This themic combination of power and creative artistry and the often blurred boundaries between the two in the play offer many opportunities for exploration in the modern context. When we consider those rubric keywords, resonances and dissonances, we see that Hagseed is imbued with both. Atwood's version of The Tempest maintains many key elements of Shakespeare's The Tempest, but it is also intertwined with her human rights agenda, specifically prison reform and possibilities of redemption and rehabilitation. This echoes her context the modern context, and we can see common concerns across her entire body of work that appear here too, such as political power, corruption and inequality. I would quote John Curran when she said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. How shall we treat other people? That is the question. Thus, Atwood interweaves these contemporary issues, enhancing the original concerns of the play and providing many riffs and counterpoints throughout. Abrams described Hagseed as a veritable hall of mirrors. 
an example of Miz on a Barn, Tag Seed is a narrative that contains a play within a play. It embeds contemporary politics, popular culture, rap, and experiments with genre. It is a playful postmodern text that provides multiple possible endings. Tag Seed is in constant dialogue with the Shakespearean original text or hypotext. Atwood's use of intertextuality is taken far beyond the intricate recreation of plot elements and characters to the use of Shakespearean phrases for section titles and indeed the entire structuring of the novel as a Renaissance play. Another example of Atwood's playful use of, playful use of form can be seen in a use of paratexts. The paratexts play a large role in influencing meaning and our interpretation of the work. Some examples include the subtitles, the epigraphs, the prologue and the epilogue. These fictional techniques suggest the intertextual possibilities in the novel and again further shape our interpretation. Atwood's experimental use of form also includes starting the novel with a dramatic script and a rap in media ray. Other examples include her inclusion of Shakespearean extracts, creative, playful references to pop culture. Felix consults his list. Snow White, he reads. Jasmine, Pocahontas, and science fiction elements. A Star Trek kind of thing. He's an alien. As well as songs, lists, and director notes. Like Shakespeare, who was an experimental and leading influence in the development of theatrical form as we know it, Atwood constantly pushes the boundaries of genre and form in her novels. Hagseed is written as a limited third person narration, indicating Felix's fallibility and unreliability as a narrator. The audience is invited to be part of the text. This is achieved through the frequent use of rhetorical questions. Having pulled it off so spectacularly, why would he bother with a lesser attempt? And the use of second person perspective throughout, which also Im indicates an implied audience or reader. In the event, the Fletcher Correctional Shakespeare class was a hit. In its own modest way, it was cutting edge. It was also, you could say, and Felix did say to his students, explaining the term carefully, avant-garde. Metatheatre is also present throughout the novel as the play is rehearsed and performed. It is woven into the novel through Felix's voice as he talks through his thinking process into how and why he intends to stage the Tempest, inviting us, the readers, to explicitly consider authorial intention. And now to the characters of Prospero and Felix. When we study the Tempest, we tracked Prospero's transformation throughout the play. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, be kindlier moved than thou art? Prospero also acknowledges his role in the conflict with Caliban. This thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine, and the flawed nature of humanity. Every third thought shall be my grave. So how does Atwood take this interpretation of the transformed Prospero and reconceptualise it in her character of Felix? In her book, Negotiating with the Dead, Atwood wrote, Prospero plays God. If you don't happen to agree with him, as Caliban doesn't, you call him a tyrant. With a slight twist, Prospero might be the Grand Inquisitor, torturing people for their own good. You might also call him a usurper. He's stolen the island from Caliban, just as his own brother has stolen the dukedom from him. And you might call him a sorcerer, as Caliban also terms him. We, the audience, are inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt and to see him as a benevolent despot. Or we are inclined most of the time. In her character of Felix, we see a complex character, arrogant and self-focused, but deeply committed to artistic pursuit. Note the repetition in this quote of the possessive pronoun his and the avant-garde theatrical descriptions. Felix sees himself 
not only as a director, but as the star of the show, which can be correlated with Prospero's self-descriptive, a prince of power in The Tempest. Following his betrayal, Felix is both literally and metaphorically imprisoned by his grief, anger and desire for revenge. Like Prospero, he needs to be set free before he can truly live. And like Prospero, he achieves that. We can see this in the final section of the novel. He hands over the Makashiweg Festival to Miranda and Freddy. And most importantly, he reconciles himself to his daughter's death. The exclamative recognition of his selfishness marks his final transformation in the play and the freedom that such an acknowledgement brings. This can be seen in the truncated final sentence that serves as an echo to the direct Shakespearean illusion preceding it. Felix's revenge is a direct consequence of his personal trauma, which makes the character much more human and thus identifiable to the postmodern reader than Prospero's narrative of political betrayal over a noble title. Although we will also note that Felix does not fully forgive his betrayers and he keeps the filmed footage in the cloud in case he should ever need it again. This is another distinction between him and Prospero. Many modern readings of The Tempest have focused on the dynamics of power and inequality in the play and considered how Prospero uses and abuses his magic on the island to regain his previous position of power. Interpretations based on post-colonial theory see Caliban as a thwarted rightful owner of the island, supplanted by a colonising Prospero. Certainly, the characters of Prospero and Caliban are very much centred around the ideas of the powerful and the powerless. The very title, Hag Seed Itself, suggests that the work is not an exact replication of the original, but offers fresh interpretations, as was the intention as part of the Hogarth collection, as discussed earlier. The pejorative hag seed is reclaimed and reframed. The choice of subverting the demeaning name given to Caliban by Prospero in her use of the title indicates the agency of this character. By naming the text after Caliban, the novel signals a deliberate choice by Atwood to claim the story, even partly, as Caliban's. Caliban's depiction in the play as a subjugated slave is transformed into a group of prisoners in the novel. No one prisoner is representative of Caliban. Caliban is instead an everyman character, representative of all of them, the collective, and on a wider scale, of all oppressed and imprisoned people. This is most clearly conveyed in the Caliban rap song, which uses second person pronouns and cumulative adjectives to suggest that Hagseed is a product of his treatment by others. Now Hagseed's black and Hagseed's brown, Hagseed's red, don't care if you frown, Hagseed's yellow and Hagseed's trash white, he goes by a lot of names, he's roaming in the night, you treated him bad, now he's a sack full of fright. The prisoners are a collective representation of Shakespeare's Caliban. Their careful characterization and the inclusion of their backstories gives them a complexity that echoes the character of Caliban and the contrast between his brutality and his sensitivity. In this day and age, Caliban is a favourite. Everyone cheers for him. Like Shakespeare's Caliban, the prisoner's rebellion is centred through language. The very nature of the prison literacy program allows them the opportunity to reclaim their sense of self in the dehumanising setting of the prison. It also teaches them new skills and the possibility of true rehabilitation. This can be seen through the character of Eight Hands. They learn how to swear in Shakespeare's idiom, although that is a requirement dictated by Felix, and later their assignments create new endings for the play, ensuring that they become co-creators themselves. There's a chorus of yes and way to goes and a round of applause that swells to a rhythmic clapping, then a stamping of feet. Hagseed, Hagseed, we want Hagseed. The multiple new endings allow Atwood to incorporate subversive, original revisions of The Tempest. 
Atwood's ending could be seen to be a playful wink to her devoted readers to apply their own interpretation in their response to what's being called this quirky, multifaceted hag seed of a novel, which both is and is not The Tempest, a peculiar polymorphic creature that, like Caliban in the inmate's final reading of the play, is the offspring of two magicians, Shakespeare and Atwood. Now you need to consider your own interpretation. And the next step is to put all of this into practice. So let's look again at how we might answer, answer a Module A question. Remember, the most important thing is to answer the question specifically. Prepared responses will not suffice. So let's have a look at the following question. Without his art, Prospero would be unable to rule. It's this that gives him power. He is an artist, after all. How has Margaret Atwood given new life to the power of art in modern times in her adaptation of Shakespeare's The Tempest? So I advise that you stick to the process that you're familiar with, underline the keywords of the question, think deeply about it, and compose a thesis in response. That's going to be your driving argument throughout. Then compose your topic sentences, how you're going to unpack your thesis and construct your argument, and then select relevant examples from the two texts to support your ideas, ensuring that you have got good balance between the two. There are many other practice questions on Canvas for you to repeat this activity, so get writing as that's the best preparation of all. And best of luck.